Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships and Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we have our very first look at the legendary tier Japanese destroyer, the Shimakaze. So, with that being said, let's get to the commander. We are using Raizo Tanaka with Eric Bay and Jersey Swirsky as our two inspirations. We have Subsurface, Subsurface Venture. We have Fragile Threat, Torpedo Safari, Destroyer Be Destroyed, and Reduce Engine Repair Time Unstoppable. You know, uh, you could go with Give Me Speed in this one, but I don't know. I like to get up close and personal, which means I get my engine knocked out a lot. Uh, if that's not your thing, maybe you go with this one instead. It's up to you. But, if we get into the ship itself, I am not using the upgraded torpedoes. Uh, we are using Aiming Systems Mod 1, Steering Gears Mod 2, Concealment System Mod, and Torpedo Launchers Mod 3. Uh, I have yet to lose a single torpedo tube on this ship, and I've been shot many a times. So, uh, I don't think it's that big a deal. Uh, but you can upgrade these torpedoes uh, and you get an extra three and a half kilometers range taking you over 16 kilometer range uh, the torpedo speed is reduced to 71 knots instead of the uh, 80 knots that you have on the screamer torps I prefer the the uh, 80 knots but uh, torpedo detectability by C is uh, 1.7 which is a little bit better than the screamers torps and the maximum damage is higher uh, 24,000 rather than the 22,000. So, let's get into the ship, shall we? Now, we are running the community contributor flag and camo. I do not have this ship currently unlocked. This was a loan for one week by Wargaming where they loaned both the Shimakaze and the Khabarovsk to the, the community contributors so that we can get videos out ahead of time for you guys. But I know there's a lot of you and me who are almost done with the Bureau projects. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there. But this is just a loan, so keep that in mind. We are running the uh, epic battle because that gives us extra range on our guns, extra movement speed, and the reload time on all consumables is less. Uh, we are running the engine boost and smoke generator. Stats, you have 16,100 hit points, so not the most hit points, but it's, it's decent. It's a lot better than Yudachi. You get 5,000 more hit points than Yudachi, so that's nice. Artillery, you still have uh, six 127mm guns. They reach out to 10.3 kilometers, reload in 7.2 seconds, and uh, 180 degree turn time is not great, but 22.8 seconds. Uh, HE shell damage of 1800 with a 7% chance to set fires, and AP shell is 2200, though you will probably never use it. Or maybe you will. I personally don't use it. Uh, the Japanese HE is fantastic. I've said it over and over again, so... That's why I don't use the AP very often. Uh, torpedo launchers. You have 610 millimeter torpedoes. You have 15 of them. You have three quintuple launchers. They reload in a minute and a half. Basically 95.6 seconds with this build. Uh, the maximum damage is 22,382. They are detected at 1.8 kilometers. The torpedo range is 9.3 on this build. So uh, not bad. Torpedo speed, 80 knots. Maneuverability, 42.6 knots without the engine boost. So you get that engine boost going, you're going like 46 knots, 47 knots, somewhere in there. Uh, turning circle, 690, not great, but not horrible. Rudder shift is down to 2.4 with this build. Concealment is by far our best trait, 4.7 kilometers. Same as the uh, Yudachi, same as the Kagero. Yudachi might be 4.6, but uh, same as the Kagero, I believe. Uh, very, very sneaky. Detectability by air is 2.6, guaranteed is always 2, and detectability while firing in smoke is 2.5 kilometers. Overview. Hidden good concealment means the ship can get closer to the enemies, of course. Big yield above average torpedo damage, absolutely. And fast above average maximum movement speed, which we talked about. An experimental cruiser type destroyer with increased displacement, the ship was equipped with very powerful propulsion, making Shimakaze faster than the majority of her contemporary ships of the same type. Shimakaze was second to none in terms of torpedo armament, the first and only destroyer of the Imperial Japanese Navy to be equipped with quintuple torpedo tubes. There, she entered service in 1943 and there was one of them built, which means this ship actually sailed, potentially. But it was at the end of the war or after the war, so does it count? I don't know. 
I'll let you guys figure it out. I know 42's... I don't remember. I My history is all goofed. But anyway, let's look at this ship. Now, it's it sits really high in the water. That's the first thing I noticed, which means when you get into a gunfight, that's going to be a problem. Uh, people will be able to do a lot of damage to you. But, other than that, it's got good... Well, not good, but decent torpedo firing angles. And uh, it's got a lot of torpedoes. And what can you not love about that? So, let's get to the gameplay. Alrighty, so we are going to be on Sleeping Giant and it's a domination. Because, of course. <laughs> but, I get the, uh, the unusual but definitely huge advantage of being the only destroyer in this entire lobby. There's a couple radar cruisers out there. There's several cruisers in this lobby, four of them to be exact. But, it's a domination and I'm the only destroyer on the map. That is a huge advantage. So, uh, we're going to take advantage of it. Now, this ship, like I said, I'm very close to getting it myself. I only have uh, a couple more days and it'll be mine. Uh, Khabarovsk is lagging a little bit behind, but the, uh, the Shima will be done very, very soon. Um, so... May even be done before they take this one from me, so I'm going to have to get with Wargaming to see if that's going to be an issue so that they don't take away my ship after I actually earn it. That would be annoying. <laughs> but, anyway, uh, we're going to push into B and start capturing bases because the number one thing that you do in a destroyer on a uh, domination match is what? Capture bases. Especially when you're the only destroyer because you're unlikely to be challenged. Cruisers aren't going to push into a base early on, especially when there's five battleships on the enemy team. So, all you got to do is pay attention to what's around you, go into the base. If a radar cruiser is approaching you, then you've got to be aware of, you know, how close you are to them, obviously, and depending on what you're up against. But we have American radars against us, which means it's long duration, which is 30 seconds, and it's 9 kilometers. So we don't have to worry too much about radar unless we get within 9 kilometers. However, we're not going to have to worry about that. We're going to get into B, we're going to start capturing, and we're going to point ourselves straight to A, because as soon as we're done capturing B, we're going into A. I've got a Wichita and I believe a Gross Occur first behind me, to my left, and almost everybody on my team to the right. Now, this map tends to be a, a slugfest and a, a stalemate on the right side, which is why I'm not bothering with them at the moment. I was checking this Odin over here, because I figured he might go in front of the island, and if he did, if he did he'd be dead. But uh, no, he's not going to go in front of the island. Wisely, he turns around and goes behind the island, which is the best decision he could make. Which is more than I can say for his next three minutes worth of gameplay where he just charges forward and gets himself obliterated. <laughs> kind of wish he had stayed on this side of the map, or on, on this side of the island. If he was going to kill himself, I might as well be the one to do it for him. But, you know, to each their own. Uh, we are going to capture this base pretty soon. And uh, then we're going to move over into A. I apologize for this video being a little bit late. They threw this at us unexpectedly this morning. So I actually had another video that I had scheduled for noon that I'm going to put on hold until tomorrow. So you'll see that video tomorrow. Or maybe I get to meet the Khabarovsk tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, we're going to try to try to get some uh, good, good videos for you guys out. Uh, actually, the Khabarovsk will probably be Wednesday if I had to you know, say it right off the bat. Because Mondays are always my busiest day. I've got this, and then I've got the, the game with Hive, and or the stream with Hive, and then I've got to record a video for Taskmaster Tuesday tomorrow. So Mondays are always my busiest day. And so I definitely probably going to put the Cobber off, off till Wednesday. But uh, I will definitely get it out there. I've already seen, I've run into several community contributors this morning. Uh, Alderwash, uh, Shodan, and uh, not Cerberus in legendary destroyers and so that's been fun me and cerberus have had a kind of a, a run into one another every match that we played together unfortunately and uh i came out on top because i had the better team the first time he came out on top the second time because he had the better team the second time there wasn't a whole lot i could do in that second match i tried i think i ended up with 140,000 damage uh i ended up with like 1500 base xp and a loss so uh, I definitely did my job, but uh, there's only so much you can do when your entire team just potatoes. But it is what it is. We're going to sit here, and you notice that I am already trying to put myself in position to torp somebody who may come around the corner. And I'm actually going to make a mistake here, and I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that. One, one mistake that I make with this ship already that I've noticed is that I always launch all my torps. Always. 
you've got 15 torpedoes. They're Japanese torpedoes. They hit like a Mack truck. Uh, you do not need to launch all 15 at one ship. Especially at these kind of ranges. That Monarch has no chance of dodging these torpedoes because he's potatoing real hard. And I just launched 15 torpedoes at him. If I had saved these torpedoes, or at least one set of the torpedoes, I could have torped the Bismarck in a moment. But now I've got to wait over a minute for these torps to come back. And uh, as you can see, Monarch, not long for this world. He runs into all the torpedoes. Uh, but, again, you've got a uh, American heavy cruiser or super cruiser with a radar inside eight kilometers of this smoke screen, and he's not using it. He's not using his radar, uh, which is preferable for me, but uh, definitely not preferable for this Bismarck. Now, Bismarck's going to do the right thing. He's going to turn away, and uh, because I'm using the Screamer Torps, I can't outrange him with torpedoes. Uh, I'm using the, the low range. I say low range. They're 9.3 kilometer torpedoes, or 9.2. They're not low range. I mean, these things are mid range at, at worst, um, and better than some nations like main torpedo armament. So they're definitely not to be trifled with, and they're the they're the fast torpedoes. So that's even better. Uh, we're trying to set some fires on the Bismarck, and I believe we set a fire right off the bat on the Bismarck, but he damage conned it, and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get another fire. However, he's chasing our uh, Grossa Kerfurst, and Grossa Kerfurst has been broadside to both of him and the Alaska for the entire time that they've been fighting. So, uh, needless to say, the Grossa Kerfurst is losing this fight. Uh, now, I, I look at the Bismarck, I'm thinking about engaging the Bismarck, and I'm like, I, I can't. He's sailing away from us. I figured they're probably going to end up ramming one another at some point. But uh, Bismarck, to his credit, does the right thing. He doesn't ram him. He doesn't let him uh, get into that position. Now, I launch on the Alaska, and I'm anticipating him turning all the way back around. And again, I launch all my torps. Now, in this case, it's a lot more um, useful to launch all your torps because your aerial denial, basically, is what we're going for. We're spreading as much room as possible for a torpedo hit on that Alaska. And uh, as you're going to find out, we actually get a pretty good torpedo strike on him. Um, but that's more to the fact that quantity over quality. I'm not the best torper in the world, but even I find it hard to miss when I've got 15 of them. <laughs> so uh, we take all of his health away. Of course, he's going to survive for pretty much the rest of the battle, because why would anybody on my team shoot them? <laughs> I've got a Wichita over here that's been hiding behind an island the entire game doing absolutely nothing. I mean, he is firing over the island, but he hasn't been able to set any fires, I believe, and he doesn't take out the Alaska. So I don't know what he was doing. It's a Bismarck in Alaska. The Alaska just got thumped for all of his hit points. So you would think at a Wichita, having 27 millimeters of bow armor, would go in there and punch, that, uh, punch the Alaska, get him out of there, and then take on the Bismarck, which, I mean, let's be real, it's a Bismarck. So... Uh, even with the secondaries, you can you can absolutely ruin a Bismarck's life. Now, we have three bases to their one. So, my next job is to get away, leave the guys that have no impact on the match. Those two ships that are behind us, no impact on the match. The best that they can hope for is to get into the base and flip the base, and that evens it out, and we still have the score lead. So, they are no impact whatsoever on the match. Uh, they may get some shots into the broadsides of my teammates here in the middle in a little bit, but that'll be up to them to figure out. I've got bigger plans. I see a Yami on the horizon, and also a smoke screen to my right. Now, we know that there's no destroyers there, so that can only mean one thing. We have a smoke screen from a cruiser sitting in the smoke screen. And watch what you see, guys. Wait for him to fire. He's going to fire his guns, and that's going to tell me exactly where he's at. You see it? What we actually have in this smoke screen is an Azuma and a Kuchizov, which is even better because uh, I knew the Kuchizov was there. The Azuma was kind of a, a booby prize, you know what I'm saying? Just a little bit of a, uh, hey, uh, might as well take this while you're at it too. And I've got 15 torpedoes on the way to try to introduce myself to both those guys who think it's smart to sit in their smoke screen behind an island. Uh, you know, if you're going to make it this easy, even a dummy like me can take advantage of it. Uh, but Azuma gets walloped by my team. Like, that is straight up walloped. And he's still spotted. And there's the hit and the sink and devastating strike on the Kuchizov. But wait, there's more, folks. Are we going to get the double kill? Oh, come on. 
No, that torpedo took too long to get there. We do get the double kill, but unfortunately it's not a double strike because it just was too long. I think it's within four seconds of each other. But uh, darn it, we missed. Now, we're up to 135,000 damage done, nine torpedo hits, three kills. Only five people have been killed on this team, so you can tell that my team was extremely crucial in this victory uh, that we are about to enjoy. And that's when I start salivating. I see a radar cruiser way off in the distance. I see a radar cruiser way off in the distance behind me. There's a Yami right here getting ready to have to turn one way or the other, and he's turning towards me. I'm not going to lie. I get a little bit trigger happy. I needed to wait. I needed to wait and wait for him to commit. Because what happens is, I'm assuming I know what he's doing, which is turning and he's going to go broadside along the border. Uh, I was completely wrong. And once again, I launch all my torpedoes and he actually turns all the way back on himself. Yeah, in a Yami. Now, anybody, if anybody on my team was competent, they would absolutely delete this Yami for what he's doing. But, again, I don't need to say anything, really. <laughs> I, I really don't. Uh, but, we screwed the pooch on the last shot. Uh, that's, that's on us, but we're almost done. We're about to have all four caps. It's, there's no, no coming back for this for the enemy. Uh, they played way too passively. My team did just enough to hold them for me to absolutely wreck them. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I enjoy this ship. I'm going to have a lot of fun. This is my new favorite destroyer, Yudachi. Go away. I don't really care for the Yudachi anymore. This is my bay. This has great guns. The only thing it doesn't have is a torpedo reload booster, which is a good thing. You do not want somebody having 30 torpedoes sent in your way. I'm just saying. So thank you for not giving them a torpedo reload booster. But, uh, yeah, this thing is a fantastic destroyer. I enjoy the crap out of it. I really do. So, uh, top... 135,000 damage, 3 kills, top of the leaderboard, almost 3,000 base XP. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.